Good morning. Is everybody awake? Yep, getting there, huh? So you're familiar with this book, right? Yeah. I'm Tim Bowers. Oh, did you want to start with the th the yeah, I thing there? Yeah, I have to read there? a little blurb <laughs> about this program. Mr. Bowers is with us thanks to the Library of Michigan. They sponsor a program called Michigan Reads. It's also sponsored by Target with additional support from the Library of Michigan Foundation, Jackson National Life Insurance, and Sleeping Bear Press. This program is also supported in part by the Library of Michigan with federal funds from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. So all that means you guys get to hear Mr. Bowers talk about this cool book and illustrations. Do you know what an illustrator is? Yes. What is an illustrator? What's an illustrator? It, um, it, um, it the pictures of the book. That's right. Very good. So very I'm, good. I'm going to let him tell you about that because he does that for his job. All right. Very good. That's excellent. All right. Yes. I painted all the pictures that went into this book. And I actually brought these two paintings right here are from the book, um, Acoustic Rooster. So I will start by reading the, the story. When you see these pages come up in the book, let me know, okay? You can point at them when you see the page in the book, okay? So um, I'll read the book, and then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I did when I was a little boy and how, the things I drew. And then I'm going to draw some pictures for you over here on this easel. So we'll have a lot of fun. Um, Acoustic Rooster and his Barnyard Band. I grew up in Troy, Ohio. That's down in Ohio near Dayton. And when I was little, I loved to draw. I was probably about your age. I would scribble, and, and I have a few photographs of me drawing as a little boy. But I practiced through the years. Do you have a question? When I grow up, I'm going to write newspapers. You're going to write for the newspaper? Yeah. Very good. Very good. That'll be fun. If you have questions, hang on to your questions for a little while, and I'll, I'll call on you in a, in a few minutes, okay? okay. There will be a time for questions. All right, because I know a lot of you probably will have some questions. But um, I used to draw a lot as a little boy. And what happens when you practice something a lot? You get better. Very good. Yeah, you get better. I've been practicing since I was little. So now I do a lot of these paintings <laughs> professionally. That's my job now. So you never know when you're little, things that you enjoy doing might become your job when you grow up. All right, Acoustic Rooster and his barnyard band. This was written by Kwame Alexander. Okay, there's a big picture of him with his guitar. Okay. Acoustic Rooster sat outside strumming his bass guitar. He practiced jazz all summer long so he could be a star. This might help a little bit. <laughs> if I hold it out here, I'm fine. All right, there he is practicing his guitar. What happens when you practice? You get better. Yeah, an acoustic rooster is practicing. All right. Now, every year about this time, Farmer announced his plan to hold a barnyard talent show and find the farm's best band. Everybody see the little chicken here with the sunglasses? Yeah. There's a little chicken there, and he's wearing sunglasses. Yeah. Isn't that fun? See the he's hiding right back there. He's a little chicken, but he's wearing sunglasses. Yeah, it's, it's hard to see because it's so small. But I like to put little fun things in the artwork like that and make you laugh at it. Okay. Moving on. <clears throat> Acoustic Rooster asked to join. Very good. Good eyes. That, that illustration is right there. Acoustic Rooster asked to join Thelonious Monkey's crew, but farmer's rules prevented that because they lived at the zoo. Yeah, zoo. Nah, you can't be at the zoo. The, the talent show is at the farm. Mules Davis led an orchestra that featured three cool cats. Ella Fitzgerald had a trio, but Rooster couldn't scat. Does anybody know what scat is? No. You ever heard anybody sing like this? Ba ba da woo ba ba doo ba ba like that? That's scat. That's when you're singing. I have the book, the Jungle Book, 
and the bear sometimes sings like That's right. Yeah, he sings scat. All right, so that's what that means. Rooster was feeling kind of blue, then heard a baby grand. I have a great idea, he said. I'll start my own jazz band. All right. He's gonna, he has big eyes, yeah. So he went to see his cousin, a pianist of great fame. He found him on the riverbank. Duck Ellington's his name. And there's Duck Ellington. Duck took him to the Cotton Club to hear Bee Holiday sing. Bee said, honey, I'll join your band as long as you can swing. Yes, it's right there. Does everybody see that? There's the illustration. Okay. Very good. You have good eyes. All right. A drummer with a big old smile was itching for a gig. I've got cowbells and conga drums. I'm a percussion pig. There's the percussion pig. Mighty fine to meet you, said Pig. I'm Pancho Ernesto Cruz. Duck told him, friend, your name's too long. Pork chop is what we'll use. Pork chop. So they called him Pork Chop. <laughs> <laughs> the talent show began with mules blowing his bebop horn. Then Ella followed with a song as sweet as candy corn. Candy, that's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Acoustic Roosters band performed a bossa nova tune. The hen from Ipanema made the barnyard chickies, chickies swoon. There's chickies. Everybody see that? All right. The band's encore came round midnight in grand finale style. Acoustic Rooster's jazzy riff drove the barnyard wild. There he is playing his guitar. When at last the votes were tallied, Mules Davis won first prize. Rooster and his band played sec placed second and tears swam in his eyes. He was kind of getting teary, wasn't he? He came in second. We really got some buzz, B said. Then mules headed their way. The words he spoke brought lots of smiles. That rooster sure can play. So even mules enjoyed rooster's band. That rooster sure can play. Acoustic Rooster headed home, his guitar in his hand. He did, didn't win the talent show, but he had the world's best band. He's, he's happy. He's happy. He loves jazz. He's heading home to the chicken coop, so he's happy. All right, so that's the story, Acoustic Rooster. And I can show you these paintings up close so you can see what they look like. These were painted with oil paints. I'm sure you don't know what, do you know what oil paints are? No. no. Yeah. It's the kind, do you really? I like oil pastels because we have, yeah. those, in, we have those in our classroom. That I have them. Yeah. yeah. Oil pastels are kind of like a cross between oil paint and crayons. They make them into sticks, right? That's what we have. Yeah. So those are two paintings from the book. And these are the real paintings that I did and I sent these to the company that, that made the book. So you're looking at the actual paintings. Okay. Let me show you something else here. Remember I said I enjoyed drawing as a little boy? How many of you like to draw? Me. We have a lot of artists. Wow. All right. A lot of artists in the group. These drawings were done when I was a little bit older than you, probably about 10. But there are three drawings here that tell a story. And so I, I want to tell you about the, the drawings. This first one shows a picture of my grandpa and my dad and my uncle. And here, what is this? A, bull. a mean bull. See the mean bull? You can tell he's mean because of his face. Look at his face. Doesn't he look mean? Faces are really important when I illustrate a story. 
and his feet. He's kicking dirt. Yeah, you, you know a bull's yeah. mad when he's... <laughs> His face looks like he's tired. He looks like he's tired? Well, the bull's supposed to be mean. So I tried to give him a mean face, and faces are really important. If you look at the faces of all the characters in my books, you can see I put a lot of expressions on the characters because that helps me tell the story. So here they are. They're trying to get away. My dad's jumping over the fence, and Grandpa looks like a bullfighter. Let's go to the next drawing. Here my grandpa's jumping in the air. See the lines under his feet? That's how I show him jumping in the air. He's, he hit the bull on the head with a, a club or a stick, and he hit him so hard he broke the stick. See the sticks in two pieces? That's not a stick, it's a baseball bat. It does kind of look like a baseball bat. I don't know if he had one of those, but he hit the, the bull with a stick, and he hit him so hard he put a bump on the bull's head, and he knocked the bull's horns off. You see the horns flying in the air back here? Yeah. Is that silly? Yeah. Do you think that really happened? No. I think I used my imagination for that part. I probably added that to the story. But that's what he did. His horns. He's what? He's biting his horns. I'm not sure what you... He's the, biting. biting his horns? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that, that could be, uh, be another story, maybe. I don't know. Um, but anyway, look at his face. Is he still mean? Yeah. Is he, he's still pretty mad. So the third drawing, the final drawing, is a picture of my grandpa, and he's running away from the bull. And see the mud splashing around his feet? That's the way I drew mud, kind of scribbled the mud around there. And so there are three drawings here that tell a story, don't they? The first one shows the bull. Whoops. The first one shows the bull and my grandpa and my dad and my uncle. And then I stayed in the car because we were looking for mushrooms that day. You ever go mushroom hunting? No. No? In the spring for a couple of weeks, there are mushrooms. They're called morel mushrooms. And we used to, when I was... I eat mushrooms. Yeah, some people really like mushrooms. I like mm -hmm. mushrooms. <laughs> yep. If you have a question... Hey, gang, if you have a question or you want to say something, please raise your hand so we can all we'll take turns and that way everybody can hear you. Okay, yes? I like mushrooms on my pizza. Oh, yeah, so do I. Yeah, do you have... I, I like mushrooms with my dinner. With your dinner, okay. There are a lot of people that like mushrooms. Let's move on with the story, and then we'll come back to the uh, questions. All right. So there are three drawings that tell a story, and the second drawing is my grandpa hitting the bull, and then the third drawing is my grandpa running away from the bull. So there's a whole story there, isn't there? When I was a little boy, I enjoyed telling stories with my artwork, and now as an adult, I still tell stories with my artwork. I've done 35 books, and there are, I've done skunk books, and chicken books, and goldfish books. I've done pig books. This was by Christy Yamaguchi, who's an, a, an ice skater. You ever heard of Christy Yamaguchi? No. She's a very good ice skater and Dancing with the Stars. She won Some, Sometimes I just sit down and I draw from my imagination. I don't really need to look at anything. And sometimes I take photographs and I can look, and I can look at the photograph. Well, this is a little sculpture. It's a little sculpture that I made out of clay. Do you like to make things out of clay? Or like Play-Doh? But, you like, but it your hands dirty. It gets on your hands a little bit, and then you have to wash your hands. But this is made out of clay. And I made this little guy for a book that I worked on called Little Whistle. And Little Whistle is a guinea pig. So I needed a guinea pig that I could look at and draw from. Yeah, who, anybody in here have a guinea pig? Are you kidding? You have a guinea pig? They're fun. They're really nice pets. Yeah. Oh, okay. Remember, we need to raise our hand. Mr. Bowers has things to tell us. So this is a little guinea pig, and I made him out of Sculpey. I don't know if the teachers know what Sculpey is. You can get it at a craft store. But you make things out of it, and then you bake it in the oven, and it gets hard, and then you can paint it. So I could look at him from the front, or I could look at him from the side, and I could draw using this as the model. I don't do that for every book, but I've done it for a few. So I thought that would be fun to show you. Okay. So where were we? Pig books, dog books. I've done a lot of dog books. I like dogs. Anybody in here have a dog? A lot of people have dogs. Yeah, I love dogs. 
Okay. Here's a question for you. When you look at this little skunk, what shape do you see when you look at his head? Do you see a shape there? Yes, what, what kind of a shape do you see? Do you see a circle? If I drew a, a line... <coughs> Upside down triangle. There you go. Do you see a triangle from his nose to his ear to his other ear? It's very triangular, isn't it? Do you see a triangle there? Yeah. Kind of? Well, I used a triangle to draw that face. And I'll show you how I do that. What shape did I use to, to paint these kids in this picture? Circle. Do you see a circle rectangle. when you look at... Rectangle. Yeah, I, a rectangle for maybe some of the, the books and the, the tables. But what about their heads? Circle. Circles. Do you see circles when you look at that? Yeah. Okay, very good. I use a lot of shapes when I draw. And that's the way I learned to draw cartoons when I was a little boy. I had a book that was written by Walter Lance, and he's the guy who created Woody Woodpecker. Have you ever heard of Woody Woodpecker? Yeah, I have the TV. You seen him on TV? Well, he was real popular when I was little, and so I learned to draw Woody Woodpecker, starting with a shape. Let's try a few shape drawings. I'm going to start um, with a circle. Let's try two circles. There's a circle, and here's a circle. They look like circles? Okay. <clears throat> I'm starting with an orange marker, but we're going to pretend this is my pencil. Okay? And I usually draw with a pencil in my studio instead of a marker or a pen. Why would I draw with a pencil instead of ink or paint? Anybody have an idea? Because you'll get messy. Because I get messy with paint, but there's another reason. Yeah, well, let's forget the paint part. Let's say it's, I use a pencil instead of a pen, like ink. And one more thing, and if you, if you use a pen, yeah. it would get all over your hand. Okay, that's, that's very... And it wouldn't come off. It wouldn't come off. It's very messy. And you're right on target there. I use a pencil because I can erase it. If I make a mistake, I can erase pencil. It's a lot harder to, to correct an ink line, right? Anybody in here ever uh, make a mistake when you draw? You draw a line, you go, oh, darn, I wanted to make that over here. You know, move it around a little bit. I do that every day. I reach for my eraser and I have to correct something. So this is going to be my pencil for today. I drew my circles with the pencil. Now let's say I want to put some eyes on this first circle. So I draw some more circles here. Just shapes. We're just working with shapes right now. Maybe a little circle, oval right here. And let's see, maybe there's a circle here and a circle here. It looks like a bear. It's starting to look like a bear. And all we've done is draw circles. All right, Woody Woodpecker, does it look like Woody? Okay. I'll put some eyes in there, maybe another circle here. A bear. It, it looks a lot like a bear. I call this blocking in the, the, the face. I've drawn very lightly these pencil lines. Now I can come back with my black ink line and trace these lines using them as a guide, like a road map. So here's what I'm going to do. I want to make this a kind of a furry little bear, so I'm going to add some fur to that line. See how I'm following the pencil line? So it really helped to have that pencil done first, didn't it? Yeah. There are the ears. Still look like a bear? Yeah. And then the eyes. Little eyes, maybe a little nose. <laughs> it's a little tiny nose. And then this little part here. Is it a happy bear or a sad bear? Happy bear? Happy bear? Let's make it a happy bear. All right, so there's a little bear. What happens when I put lines around the ears like this? That means he listens. He listens? There, okay. That could, it, what else could that mean? Yeah. Very good. He's wiggling his ears, isn't he? 
So those little lines are called motion lines, and I use those a lot when I draw cartoons. Yeah, do you have, do you have a question? Or you're just wiggling your hand. Do anything. Okay. Okay, it could mean that, yeah. Why did you make the two <coughs> out of clay? Why did I make the little character out of clay? So I could use him as a model to draw from. You know, sometimes it helps to look at something to draw it. And that's why if I, I didn't have a real guinea pig in the studio, so I, I made a little clay guinea pig so that I could look at him from the front or from the side to see what he looked like. Yeah, it just helps sometimes to have something to look at if you're not quite sure what it looks, you know, what it looks like. Okay, what happens when I add a few little lines right here? Does it make it look more like a little girl bear? All right, now it looks kind of like a girl bear. Okay. The... It's a little bear, a girl bear right now, but we started with one shape. What was that shape? Circle. circle. Let's go down to the second circle, and instead of a face, let's try drawing this. Let's see if you can guess what this is. Triangle up here, triangle down here, triangle here. Does that look like a fish? Okay, we have all the shapes in. We have a circle. We have these shapes right here, which are tri triangles. All right. A happy shark. All right. <laughs> where where are his teeth? Do you want to put a little teeth on him? Yeah. All right. He was going to be a goldfish. I've done a goldfish book. But if he has teeth, he wouldn't be a goldfish. Do you want teeth? How's that? All right. Yeah, he's not a goldfish anymore. A goldfish shark? That's a new new kind of a fish. Now you're making up your own fish. And then what are these little circles here? Bubbles. And then these lines, motion lines, make it look like it's swimming through the water. Okay, so both of these were started with what shape? Circle. Very good. Let's try another shape, shall we? <laughs> What was the shape that I drew the skunk with? Remember that? Triangle. triangle. Let's try a triangle. I might make a skunk. If I put eyes up here like this, it looks like Mr. Pizza right now, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. Now I added a nose, and there are a lot of animals. You can make a lot of different animals with a triangle. What if I, what if I put ears on it like this? What would this be? A mouse. What if I put ears on it like this? A fox. It looks more like a fox. All right, let's see. I, I might be able to surprise you with this one. Let's see if I can surprise you. You think it's a skunk?
Good guess. Does that look like a dog? Yeah. All right. It's a dog with a hat on. Maybe he has a flower coming out of here. Let's do that. No, it wouldn't necessarily have to be a girl dog. All right. What happens when I put a line through his eyes like this? There, now it gives him a whole, a whole different expression, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, does anybody have a question? Now's a good time to ask me a question if you have a question. You don't want to tell him a story. You want to know what something from him. Yeah. What would you like to know? Nike. Mr. Nike here. Yeah. I'm Luca. Hi, Luca. Um, um, my birthday is on August 21st, and I saw that I do made a flower, and bees eat nectar. Bees eat nectar? Yeah. Should I add a bee to that? I think I should put a bee on there? Yeah. Okay. Let's put a little bee up here. There, how's that? A little bee? Yeah. All right. Good idea. Adding the beer really, really made that. Insect, yeah, I could. Yeah, yeah. Is bee, a bee close enough to the insect? Me too. Yeah. Like Mr. Bowers, question now. Oh, Kinder Cubs, I have a question for him. <laughs> Do you see the, the words first and then they ask you what to draw? Or have you drawn stories without the words? Good question. Um, most of the books, I think all these books, were started with the words. And the person who, who writes the words, do you know what they're called? There you go, an author. Have you heard of that word, author? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the author make the author writes the words, and then the author sells their story to the publisher. Listen, the author who writes the words sells the story to the publisher. And that's the big company who makes it into a book. And then the publisher calls me. Tim Bowers, would you illustrate this book? And you know what an illustrator is. They're the person who does the pictures. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, draws the pictures. So they send me the words, and I read through the story, and then I think about what the characters might look like and how I want to tell the story in the, in the book with my pictures. Okay, good question, though. That's very good. It takes a long time. It takes me like three months to create one book. So that's a long time. You have an idea. He's falling asleep. Who? He's falling asleep. The dog. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you, do you want me to finish this dog? Yeah. All right. Let's see here. What, what can we have him doing here? Let's do this. You think he's going to fall asleep in school? Yeah. He's got tennis He's got tennis shoes on. All right. Okay. So there he is. I'm not sure what what he's dressed for. If those are pajamas, they might be his pajamas. You think he sleeps in his tennis shoes? I don't know. Could be a story there. Sleeping in the car. Okay, I'd have to draw a car, so I'll pass on that. Okay, I'll do one more drawing. Does anybody else have a question? Do you have a question? Go ahead. Uh, if the dog had a belly, that would be really silly. <laughs> if the, yeah, it would be silly if the dog had a belly. I'm sure he's, he has a belly in there somewhere. A belly button? Oh, belly button? Oh, well. You can't see it. He's wearing his pajamas. All right. Actually, 
if we have time, I could do two more drawings. I'll do one from my very first book, The Toy Circus. The Toy Circus was about um, a little boy who goes to bed at night and the toys in his toy box come to life and they have a little circus in his bedroom. One of the characters was a toy bear. So I'm going to draw a little circus bear for you. Does this look like a bear yet? No. Not quite there? Okay. Needs a few more lines? All right. Oh, it needs a circle? There's a circle right there. Now does it look like a bear? No. No? Uh. Now does it look like a bear? No. It does kind of look like a dog, doesn't it? All right, let's keep going. Maybe this will help. There. Does that look like a bear ear? No. That, it doesn't? <laughs> I need more practice. A beaver? <laughs> okay. Now, now he's a circus bear with his little circus hat on, right? What do these lines mean? He's yeah, waving. So there's your circus bear. I never draw shoes on this character. He always has bare feet. Get it? Bare feet? Okay. So there's the circus bear, and that's from my very first book. Now I'm going to draw Rooster. All right. Rooster starts with a circle, and you, you all are familiar with the circle. There's this head, and then two eyes, beak. It does look like a duck so far. Yeah, you know what? Woody is drawn a lot like this. Very good. What kind of a hairstyle did Rooster have? Did he have one hair? No. No. Did he have did he have a bunch of hair like this? No. What about like this? Yeah. That looks like a rooster. And then the body is a big circle. And then, let's put a guitar in his hand. We're going to put a circle here, and a circle here, and a, like, like that. Okay. His arm is going to be right on top of the, right on top of the guitar. Okay. I'll draw the other arm, but let's start with the ink. Rooster eyes. <laughs> a video game. He has a wild hairstyle, doesn't he? You know, my mom, when I was a little boy, my mom was a beautician. Do you know what a beautician is? It's a, it's a lady who um, styles hair. They call it a hairstylist now. 
cosmetologist is the actual name. But she was a beautician when I was growing up, so she would work in a beauty shop and do all kinds of, not like this, but um, fancy hairstyles. And my dad worked in the factory in Dayton, Ohio, so there were no artists in the family as far as uh, professional artists. So when I was little, nobody could imagine I would grow up and become an artist. You never know, you know, the things that you're interested in. But this always reminds me of my mom's beauty shop for some reason. <laughs> I don't think I saw anybody with this exact style, but. Let's put the guitar right here. Forget how to spell acoustic rooster. There we go. So there he is. I put his body. Follow that circle around there. A couple legs down here. Marks around little lines around the arm. And there's the tail feathers. All right. Let's see. Put a little thing here. A couple of knobs. And then what are these down here? Yeah. Feet, chicken feet, rooster feet. So there's the little rooster. got a little guitar strap on here. Okay. So there's Acoustic Rooster. Yay. All right. Well, I think our time is uh, coming to a close. So I just want to say thank you very much for sharing this time with me. And I hope you guys enjoy reading and books because I do. And maybe someday, you know, when you learn to read, uh, you'll be writing your own books. Okay, or illustrating your own stories. Okay, yes. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Kinder Cubs. Is that the entire group? You're welcome. You're very welcome. Very welcome. It's been a lot of fun. You've been a good group. Been a very good group.